Thanks to Subaru for partnering with us on this SciShow mini-series. The all-new 2020 Subaru Outback helped us stay comfortable during filming. If you want to learn more about the 2020 Outback and its features, you can check out the link in the description. Welcome to a very special episode of SciShow. We're going on a road trip. I'm Stefan Chin, one of your usual hosts, but today I'm here with Alexis Dahl, SciShow's content manager. Thanks for having me, Stefan. Yeah. This is not the side of the camera I usually end up on. Over the next three episodes, Stefan and I will be exploring Olympic National Park in Washington to bring you some of the coolest geology stories there. We've been doing lots of research to prepare for this trip, and we're excited to finally see the park. Yeah, so shall we get going? Let's go. All right. Even if you've lived in Washington State your entire life, there's a chance you've never seen Mount Olympus. It's tucked away on the Olympic Peninsula, and there aren't many places to get a good view of it. Which is why we're going to head up to Hurricane Ridge, partly to show off the view, but partly because there's a really great story there. See, here's the thing about Mount Olympus. Every year for millions of years, new material has been added to the bottom of the mountain and the mountain range. Except Mount Olympus hasn't noticeably grown in more than 10 million years. And as for why that is, well, let's give you a cool geology lesson. The Olympic Mountains started forming somewhere between 5 and 20 million years ago, largely thanks to the work of two tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are the huge slabs of rock that make up Earth's crust, and they move over time, changing the landscape as they go. There are a bunch of them, but the two plates to know here are the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate. Juan de Fuca is an oceanic plate, meaning it's made of dense rock and tends to hang out below sea level. And the North American plate is continental, so it tends to be above sea level. In any case, millions of years ago, this oceanic plate started subducting, or traveling underneath the North American plate. And during that process, material from Juan de Fuca got scraped off and piled onto the North American plate. It was kind of like stuff piling up at the end of a conveyor belt. And over time, that material kept building up, getting taller and taller, until finally, the Olympic Mountains were born. Now, to be clear, the mountains didn't get so tall just because a tectonic plate subducted underneath this area. Geologists are still trying to figure out exactly how they got their height, and they do have a few other ideas. Yeah, like one hypothesis is that in this part of Washington, the Juan de Fuca plate is subducting at a shallower angle than average, which is causing the crust above it to curve upwards like a dome. Another idea is that it might have something to do with how other geologic features around here are moving. Yeah, honestly, when you're trying to study things that happen over millions of years, the research gets it's a little bit tricky. Regardless of why the mountains are so tall, though, one thing is for sure. They're not done growing. For example, the Juan de Fuca plate is still subducting, so new material is being added to the mountains all the time. Also, this area is currently undergoing something called isostatic rebound. During the last ice age, this part of Washington was covered by a large ice sheet that's mostly disappeared. Yeah, mostly, but we're here and it's January and it's uh, pretty cold as you can see, among other things. So why don't we get back inside? Good idea. <laughs> Well, this is a little bit nicer. It is. Weather aside, thousands of years ago when the full ice sheet existed, it was really heavy. So heavy that it pushed down the Earth's crust underneath it. Now that the ice is gone, the crust is rebounding and rising up again. So besides the Juan de Fuca plate and everything else, that's contributing to the growth of the Olympic Mountains as well. Except the kicker is that even though these processes are still going, geologists think that Mount Olympus and the Olympic Mountains have been about the same height and about the same overall shape for 14 million years. Which is a surprisingly 
really long time. It's like this because there's actually a really cool system happening here, where the uplift of the mountains seems to be balanced by the rate they're eroding. Let's keep using Mount Olympus as an example. Actually, why don't we head over to the Ho Rainforest, which seems appropriate given what's going on. Oh yeah, let's do that. So as you might have noticed, Olympic National Park is pretty wet. One of the reasons that this happens is that the Olympic Peninsula is the first piece of land that rain clouds encounter after crossing the Pacific Ocean. So over time, rain falls, hits the mountain, and wears away the landscape. It's kind of like you can erode a sandcastle by pouring water over it. It's just on a much larger scale. But that's not the only thing happening here. Mount Olympus is also being eroded by rivers and streams running down its slopes. And that is where the balance comes in. See, as the mountain gets taller and steeper, water can flow down it faster and cut deeper channels into the rock. Those channels wear away the mountain. And thanks to that, along with sudden events like landslides, the mountain gets shorter and less steep over time. As a result, erosion happens more slowly, at least for a little while. Thanks to some of the processes we talked about earlier, Mount Olympus does eventually get taller and steeper again. And then the whole thing just repeats. And this is a stable or near stable system, which is why we don't see Mount Olympus or any of its buddies getting noticeably taller over time. And if nothing drastic changes, we probably won't. It will just exist in a nice, even balance stuck at around 2,400 meters tall. So that's the story. There's a careful balance here between the rising mountains and the erosion that wears them down. And thanks to that, Mount Olympus never really grows, even though it gets new material all the time. But hey, that's not the only story in Olympic National Park. Yeah, definitely not. So next, we're gonna head to the beach where we can learn about how an ancient island transformed the state of Washington. So stay tuned for that next week. But for now, Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow. Hey, I never get to say that. This adventure wouldn't have been possible without the 2020 Subaru Outback. So we'd like to give the team at Subaru a big thank you. Yeah, from just having comfortable heated seats to the Subaru Starlink touchscreen navigation, the Outback helped us get to Olympic National Park and navigate the roads up to Hurricane Ridge. We also got to take advantage of some features like X Mode, which was super helpful on all those hills and wintry roads. So if you want to find out more about the all new 2020 Subaru Outback, you can click the link in the description. <laughs>